Hi, my name is Dave, and this is everything you need to know about the rules regarding the sport of paramotoring. Hi guys, Dave here, lead instructor with Aviator Paramotor. I'm here to talk about the rules regarding paramotoring, the governing body, and how you as law enforcement can interact with paramotoring pilots. Should be short and sweet, the rules are not that much. We operate under what's known as FAR 103, or Federal Aviation Regulations. We're classified as a ultralight vehicle that's very intentionally done by the FAA to classify us as a vehicle. Fundamentally, that means we don't, we're not required to meet some of the criteria that are uh, necessary for general aviation, sport aviation. One of the beautiful things about this sport is just how little regulation we have. We would like to keep it that way as responsible paramotor pilots, and we'd also like to educate the general public because there are some misconceptions as far as what rules we have to follow, what rules we do not follow, and so forth. Okay, FAR 103, guys. This is the guidelines that we have to operate under. It is surprisingly thin. We do not have many rules we do have to operate under. As far as local enforcement is concerned and the general public, there are some misconceptions. One of the primary misconceptions is that there's an expectation of privacy from the air. That is in fact not the case with most aviation. And with ultralight aviation, it is actually legal for us to fly a foot off the ground all over the place as long as we are not flying over people or buildings or we're not causing a hazard to people or property. One thing to keep in mind with FAR 103, these rules are pretty much written to protect the general public, not so much the pilots themselves. So a lot of these rules are kind of written with that in mind. The federal government, believe it or not, really, they're not too concerned whether or not we go out there and crash and damage ourselves. The primary concern is, again, we don't cause a hazard to the general public as a whole. You may get some complaints or concerns with people that there's pilots flying over their property. Unfortunately for those individuals, it's completely legal. We can fly basically, as long as we're not over people or buildings, we're absolutely legal to fly. Now there is an argument, is that rude or, or nice or not? That's a different discussion to be had. But as far as regulations go, we can fly a lot of places where even general aviation can't fly as a whole. Some of the minimums that were required for general aviation are simply not required for paramotor pilots. So it is not uncommon to see paragliders or paramotors flying along 50, 60 feet over some farmland or maybe uh, bopping around, maybe flying along any number of places, and that's completely legal. And sometimes the general public is somewhat surprised to find that it is legal for someone to be 50 feet flying along their property. It is absolutely. The ownership stops basically at the ground level, and then the FAA is the controlling authority over the airspace, uh, even a foot above the ground, except for some very specific use cases. Now, as far as parks, national parks, and local parks, we are requested to maintain 2,000 feet AGL that's above ground level that is again to minimize noise impact for those types of areas but it is a request the FAA basically suggests very highly that we do not fly below that minimum altitude in those areas but if people do it is really up to the FAA to take any kind of enforcement action of course that authority ends once you touch the ground that's where your authority begins so trespassing can definitely be a thing we do teach our students to operate safely and if they do have a motor out they may have to land where they have to land that would be a case where where they may land on some private property, but if they had some sort of emergency situation, just like in general aviation, they're gonna land wherever it's safe as possible. Regarding hours of operation that we can fly, well, as long as we have a strobe, we can fly up to 30 minutes before sunrise and up to 30 minutes after sunset. But if you see folks flying along and it's well past night, that's definitely not a legal flight unless an exemption has been issued by the FAA, which can happen under some circumstances. Keep in mind also, that if you do see people operating outside of those windows, they may very well have an exemption from the FAA. And it is possible to fly at night and do all sorts of air shows and stuff like that, but express permission has to be granted by the FAA to operate outside of those windows. Okay, let's talk about the absolute cannot do's for ultralight activity. We are not allowed to take up passengers unless it is for training only, and the pilot must have a tandem exemption to operate with a passenger. You may not get paid to fly. So no directed advertising. That's kind of a gray area. If you have like a name on your wing, that's usually overlooked, but you can't act as an advertising medium. Again, the FAA would be the controlling authority over that. I just mentioned earlier, we cannot fly at night. Basically, civil twilight is our operating hours outside of daylight hours. Other than that, we cannot fly past that 30 minute window past sunset. This is again for safety and we're not IFR qualified. Oddly enough, with uh, powered paragliding, there is no licensing requirement whatsoever. So you do not have to have a license. 
you can be 13 years old and flying a paramotor that's completely legal. Although we do recommend anyone get training and definitely be a little bit older. Yeah, again, the overreaching point here is there is no licensing. So you do not have to have even a driver's license to operate a paramotor. But you can't take up passengers, right? We can't fly without seeing the ground. Well, so we need to have visual reference with this ground at all times. That ensures a safe LZ or a safe place to land. As far as airspace goes, we're the lowest man of the totem pole. We have to get out of the way of everybody else except for unmanned aircraft. So if you have a disagreement between a drone pilot and a paramotor pilot, the paramotor pilot has priority, absolutely. Those are the big can'ts we're not allowed to do, and I already mentioned we're not allowed to fly over people. We're not allowed to fly over congested areas, assemblies of people, and it's very much in the eye of the beholder. We cannot basically fly in a manner that creates a hazard to people or property on the ground, period. And again, it's gonna be very much in the eye of the beholder. Having people fly around sporting events is pretty much a big no-no. And it's not one of those things where, well, the coach said it's okay for them to fly here. If they're flying over people or assemblies of people, it is absolutely not permitted. Those are kind of the big can'ts do in the paramotoring world. Now, there are instances where you may get calls from the general public because there are pilots flying somewhat aggressively through the air. And from the general public's perspective, it looks like they're crashing. This is something we've come into contact firsthand. We've had rescue services called because we had some advanced pilots doing some advanced aerobatics, and then someone on the highway saw that they thought they were going down. Next thing you know, your rescue guys got their helicopter spooled up and, and everyone's gonna go look for a down pilot. I would encourage everyone to uh, have good relations with the paramotoring community. It has been requested of us before that we just give the local guys a heads up when we're doing aggressive flying. That way we're not spooling up resources and taking away a good rescue resources away from maybe situations that need it just because some guys are out there doing some advanced acro. Even landing, just regular pilots coming in to land from their perspective, the general public's perspective, it may look like someone's going down. So you'll get a sense of if you got guys have guys operating in your area, maybe reach out, get some contact if no, and maybe give them a call before, before you call out the full resources of rescue. Though again, as paramotor pilots, we super appreciate that people are looking out for us. It's always good to know that the general public is definitely keeping an eye out for us because things, of course, do happen. All right, moving on. So one of the beautiful things about powered paramotoring uh, is we are ultralight vehicles. So we are not required to have what is known as an N number. We don't have any inspection requirements. We don't have any airworthiness certificates. You could literally take a lawn chair and some metal frames and strap a motor to it and go fly that. I would not recommend that. That doesn't seem like a good plan of action. But there is no regulating body over the machines themselves except for a few key points. All right, the paramotor itself is not allowed to exceed 254 pounds. All right, that's the motor and that does not include safety gear. Now, if people are foot launching, there's two types. There's foot launch and trike. If people are foot launching, you're gonna be hard pressed to find anyone that has a motor that heavy. Now, if you see someone with a trike or a three or four wheeled or quad paramotor, well, those are the ones that may get up towards 254 pounds. Again, the controlling authority on that would be the FAA. We are subject to ramp checks. So those are the guys that are gonna come in and check and make sure we fall within those regulations. We do have some airspeed requirements as well. We're not allowed to exceed 55 dots at level flight powered. The reality is, is almost every wing out on the market is, does not have that capability. We do not need the airworthiness certificate. Again, as I mentioned before, there are no inspection requirements. Really, this sport is purely for recreational or sport use. It's not intended to be a commuting vehicle. It's intended to go out there and have fun and enjoy the sport, not for any kind of business use whatsoever. All of our pilots that are trained here at Aviator are well briefed on all these. Every uh, interaction I've had with law enforcement is typically the same. It's a very friendly interaction and it's usually, hey, someone called us and we saw you guys are flying kind of near here. Maybe it's like a, a direct example, an Amazon warehouse. They get nervous if people are kind of operating near there. As long as they're not over the building, it's still legal. It's not uncommon for the security guys to call law enforcement. They come and talk to us and it usually cover the base rules. Hey, we're operating legally. Sometimes we provide GPS tracks just to prove it. I've never actually had or been requested to do that, but it's not uncommon for pilots to have that data available. And then usually it just, uh, the conversation goes to pure excitement and curiosity about our sport. We get the same typical questions all the time. How high can we go? How fast do we go? How far? And just so you all know, we can go up to 18,000 feet or 17,999 feet. Very few pilots go up that high, but that is how high we can actually legally operate. We are not allowed to carry more than five gallons of fuel on board the machine, which gives us about a two, three, maybe even four hour flight time. And then our typical flight speed is 
in the average about 30 to 35, maybe 45 miles an hour. Just for y'all's edification, those are the three questions we get to most often, so there's your answers right there. Let's talk about some use cases of potential situations where you may be called out. I've already described one where maybe uh, an Amazon warehouse security detail is not so comfortable with an aircraft being somewhat nearby. Prisons don't like us flying anywhere nearby. They may be curious. I mean, there's big problems with people delivering contraband into prisons using drones and whatnot. And of course, the guards are understandably concerned. You may get a call like that. Typically, those guys will come out anyways. You may get a park manager that's not super comfortable with us launching and landing outside of that park or a public field. Those are a few examples. Unless expressly prohibited by the park authority, Authority, and it's usually some verbiage along the lines of no motorized vehicle allowed on the premises. Unless it's expressly prohibited, the assumption is that launching and landing in that area, as long as there's not an assembly of people around, is totally legit, completely doable. There's no regulation against it. If it says no motor vehicles in the area, well, we're classified as a motorized vehicle. We would fall within that restriction. Basically, where the authority is, is control over the pilots on the ground. Once they leave the ground, of course, we're under the, the authority of the FAA. So it is absolutely possible for local parks to ban or require special accommodations from the pilots to be able to operate out of that field legally. It is not uncommon for parks to ban motorized vehicles altogether. Now, that being said, there, you may have some individuals that wanna go practice what is known as ground handling or where they just clip into a glider without a motor and practice essentially flying a kite. Of course, these are a little bit more advanced than kites, but they are fundamentally the same thing. So as long as kite flying is not prohibited on that field, there should be no issue with someone practicing ground handling as long as they're doing it in a safe manner and not putting anybody at risk. That is again, without a motor and they have zero intention of actually taking off. Not an uncommon thing to have happen. Some beaches have regulations where no motorized vehicles are allowed. Of course, that would prohibit us from launching and landing at the beach that does not prohibit us from flying over the beach itself. As long as we're in the air, again, we're underneath the authority of the FAA, and as long as we meet our airspace requirements, we're operating legally. That's what's legal, that's what's permitted. Uh, it is not um, unreasonable to ask pilots to maybe not loiter in an area. We all have to share the same area, and we can understand that the general public may not wanna to listen to a motor flying back and forth and back and forth all day long. That's basically, hey, just don't be a jerk out there as a pilot. You know, be respectful of the community and the community will respect you. And that's kind of the mentality we teach here at Aviator Paramotor. Again, I encourage all of our pilots to both educate the public, educate law enforcement, talk about the rules we operate under, and then be respectful of the general population as well. Another example of where you may be called, which I've heard of before, is like these guys are flying 10 feet above my property, flying along. We're out in our backyard trying to enjoy our barbecue. Well, the reality is, is that is legal. Now, I would argue that maybe those pilots shouldn't hang out there and just be considerate of their neighbors. But if it comes down to it, what laws exist, what don't exist, as long as we're in the air and we're not flying over buildings and property, we are operating legally. And again, there's an argument, let's just not, let's be polite and, and be friendly to our neighbors. That's always a better tact. But as far as the regulation goes, that's kind of how it is. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think that they own the sky above their house and that's just simply not the case. So thanks guys for showing an interest in educating yourselves in the regulations that we have to operate under. There are more regulations, but they're more specific to in-air and more of the concern of the FAA. If you do have further questions or you wanna read the regulations them yourself, it's in the FAR, Federal Aviation Regulation book, and the uh, section is 103. Of course, uh, we here at Aviator, we've got a large team of instructors and experienced pilots, and we're all about public outreach and education. If you have specific questions, feel free to contact myself or any other team members here at Aviator Paramotor, and we'll be happy to walk you through whatever regulations may exist or answer any questions, and hopefully we spark an interest, and maybe you guys wanna fly and come out and see us and train with us and join us up in the sky. I'm Dave with Aviator Paramotor. Have a wonderful day.